Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, my Legion adventure number 35. Hey, we're covering uh, Adventure Comics 318, um, which I'm kind of looking forward to talking to you about. I had a good time reading it. So well, let's get to the basics, and then we'll shoot to the mini synopsis and then my opinion on it. Adventure Comics 318, published uh, cover date, March 1964. We're in the year of my birth. We're getting closer. So the comics are older. They're still older than me. Uh, Adventure 318. Cover credits. Kurt Swan. Swan Woohoo. Inker. George Klein. Woohoo. Letter. Irish Schnapp. Um, it's a great cover. It's got that Adventure Comics featuring Superboy and the Legion of Superhero Banner. Like I said last issue, uh, I love it. This one's called Featuring the Mutiny of the Legionnaires. Um, okay, this is getting to be a, a run and riff. Uh, it's got Sun Boy in a big yellow spaceship in a dome, and then Matter Eater Lad, Triplicate Girl, Cosmic Boy, Light Lass, Star Boy, and Lightning Lad in another ship. Uh, and Sun Boy is saying, For plotting against me, I'm casting you legionnaires adrift with no food, no radio, and scant fuel. You'll never reach another world. And Cosmic Boy responds, Sun Boy! You won't get away with this. Superboy and Monel, they will track you down and bring you to justice. Um, it's a great Kurt Swan cover, okay? Have I said I like Kurt Swan? <laughs> yeah, I guess I have. I love Kurt Swan. He is my Superman artist. He will always be my Superman artist. Even though, you know, I like other people's, but I really, it's he's amazing. All right, so this story is called The Mutiny of the Legionnaires. It's an 18-page story, part one, called... Mutiny of the Legionnaires, part two called The Castaway Legionnaires. This is their mutiny on the bounty, it seems like. Credits, editor, plotter, Mort Weisinger, plotter, scripter, Edmund Hamilton, pencil inkler, the amazing John Forte, and letter, Milton Snappen. Roll call, Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, Star Boy, Super Boy, mon -El, and Matter Eater Lad. Uh, triplicate Girl, Sun Boy, and Light Lass. The villain, the Time Trapper, makes an appearance. We actually, this is the first physically time we see the Time Trapper cool i like that a lot of people aren't here so let's read the amazing synopsis from the legion of superheroes index as sun boy and cosmic boy return from a mission they receive word from natives of the planet zen that their world is about to explode and they must be moved to another planet which has the rare element xenon in its atmosphere Although Sun Boy has been on a series of cases without a break, he agrees to lead this mission and oversees the outfitting of a great space arc filled with provisions and manned by a robot crew. Zeninians are taken aboard and depart for a new world across space just as the planet explodes. As the journey progresses, Sun Boy becomes more tyrannical toward the Legionnaires assisting him. Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, Light Lass, Star Boy, Matter Eater Lad, and Triplicate Girl... And when they, he puts Cosmic Boy in chains, they decide to rise against him in mutiny. Assisted by the robots, he thwarts them and casts the legions adrift in a small space boat as punishment. Trying to survive until they can reach a civilized planet, Tonar, the castaway legionnaires hitch hike on very, by various means from world to world until they achieve their goal. When they, then they borrow a space cruiser and search for Sun Boy's Ark. Finally find it caught in a giant vortex. After rescuing the Zinnians, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and setting them on their new Xenon-bearing world, they take Sun Boy, whose mind has now blanked out completely, to a medical foundation on Earth for treatment. There they learn that he's been a victim of space fatigue from his many missions without rest. After he is cu cured, the Legion adds a clause to their constitution, prohibiting members from taking more than five successive missions. So that's the crazy synopsis, but let me kind of, um, you know, I'll go through the story a little bit uh, because I did enjoy this. It's got a nice setup. Um, it, you know, it starts with, on page one, it's got like the hat, the one big panel, which is kind of like the, the, the extra splash page or the duplicate cover kind of thing. And then the story starts in panel two, where you see Starboy and Cosmic Boy at the end of a mission meet the Zenins. I'm pronouncing this so wrong. Um, you get to see in one panel, you get to see Superboy and Monel hitting the time bar the time barrier, um, and you see the time trap for the first time. Very cool. Um, 
you know, and then the science police give them a briefing and they build a space arc to go to Zen. Um, and Sunboy's leading it. And it's a great lineup of characters. I like this grouping. Cosmic Boy, Star Boy, you know, Lightning Lad, Light Last, Triplicate Girl, uh, and Matter Eater Lad. These are characters I really enjoy in later incarnations or, uh, you know, written by later writers. I mean, Star Boy is very different when Levitz writes him. And I like what Jeff Johns did with him in Justice Society. Um, so, but this you see the early development and, you know, Star Boy, Sun Boy, I mean, he's kind of like the smarmy, kind of cocky guy. He fills that role. Um... He's a little like Hawkeye in the Avengers, except Hawkeye kind of is, uh, once is trying to prove himself, where Sunboy has no problems with who he is, you know. He's pretty sure of himself. He's pretty cocky. So this is, I mean, this kind of, this personality where he loses it in this comic is really the building of that kind of later personality thing. And I'm probably as a fan who's read this stuff way too many times and reading a lot into it because I'm a comic fan and we read into things that doesn't exist but as fans but um, it's a great story I mean it's I love these little these it's an 18 page story it's this great silver age setup you know the rock'em sock'em robots the robots look like the rock'em sock'em robots um, and Sunboy overpowered the legionnaires and put them in a lifeboat and then chapter two is all about their journey and it's this neat thing and it's got another it's got the splash page that kind of previews what's going to happen and then it shows them adrift and they hook a ride on a meteor um they land on a planet with heavy gravity and light last makes them lighter so they can survive they use diamonds to capture a space a uh, beast of some sort um and get carried out and then they land on another planet, and they're giant cactus and bees, and Matter Eater Lad finds honey, some food for them. Um, uh, it, oh, he, he finds some food, and then it's not poisonous, but the bees are coming back, so Starboy makes them all heavy and fall to the ground. Then they just happen upon a spaceship by a waterfall... Uh, and this, they've been the astronauts have been turned to stone because there's a petrifying chemical in the in the spray from the um, waterfall. But they're able to rebuild their ship with the help of uh, by using parts of these two dead astronauts' ship. So they put the statues up, um, you know, the pe petrified bodies as statues to mark them. It's very noble and so they fly off the toner toner like uh where and then they go find this the space art stuck in a void and star boys in a fugue state and they save everybody and they built and they put a rule in the lee in the constitution and then that constitution is reprinted and published in different books all the time um it's just another simple silver age comic i if you're reading along i I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. Next week is a Jimmy Olsen comic, um, and I'm looking forward to that. It's still drawn by John Forte, which makes me happy. Uh, to, day after tomorrow is the next installment of the Avengers Defenders War. It's an issue of the Avengers uh, by Englehart and Brown, and it's got Swordsman versus Valkyrie, which I'm excited to gab about because I do like both those characters. And this weekend's show, I don't know yet. I will be recording for another podcast about something, another uh, comic I love. I've got some Sandman to catch up. I haven't posted any Sandman issues. Maybe I'll get two in tonight after I post this. Um, and I'm going to start reading Bone. Um, oh, and I, um, so, and I'm just, so, if anybody's interested, I've started to read the Silver Age Suicide Squad because I have the trade. And I've really liked the 60s wacky sci-fi element of it. It's not like my Suicide Squad at Ostrander, the one that I, you know, which had made me a fan of that concept. But it's great to read the, er, the early adventures of Rick Flagg and Karen Grace. So I'm going to read through. And it's the collection is A Bunch of Brave and the Bull with Suicide Squad. And then just some star, uh, you know, their Suicide Squad, different teams. And it's mostly set in World War II. 
uh, and they're, they've got a high 50s sci-fi camp quotient. And I'm in, really intrigued to think about that. And Max, you do weird war comics. I would love to know what you're, you think about the, uh, those. And maybe you'll come on one day. Maybe we, I'd love to talk to somebody about that. And Because I don't know that those aren't comics I've read, so I don't know their history. So I'm kind of going into it blind, but I'm excited. Um, but folks, that's it. Uh, you'll hear from me if you're listening to the Defender stuff uh, day after tomorrow. And I hope you enjoyed this. Well, And remember, be smart, be safe, be kind. You never know when someone comes into your life who's going to leave it. I lost a teammate this week, a, a co-worker. He is, da- he, is, he, he is going to pass any day now, and we've had to say our goodbyes. So be kind to the people around you. They're not always there, okay? Um, And Sheldon, he's going to be missed because he was one hell of a nice guy. But remember, be kind and read some comics.